Hello and welcome. This is a short video tutorial to explain why lasing requires an active medium with three or more energy levels, created by Tim Wooten and Bhavit Palmer. This is a diagram illustrating the optical cavity for a laser, showing the active medium and mirrors that aid the amplification process, resulting in the laser output beam. Within this active medium, there are three main processes occurring, the first of which is absorption in which an incoming photon excites an electron from the lower energy level E1 to the excited state E2 in a two-level system. Once in this excited state, this electron can undergo spontaneous emission. When it relaxes from the high energy level E2 to the lower energy level E1, emitting a photon of characteristic energy that is the difference of the two levels. The third process occurring within this active medium can be stimulated emission whereby an incoming photon stimulates an electron from the high energy state to a lower energy state emitting a coherent photon. As you can see, stimulated emission results in the amplification required. In order for amplification, the rate of the stimulated emission needs to be greater than the absorption rate, such that the rate of change of atoms from E2 to E1 needs to be greater than the rate of change of atoms from E1 to E2. N1 and N2 are the number of atoms per unit volume in energy level 1 and 2. Rho is the spectral density of, ra of the radiation, which is dependent on the frequency. B12 and B21 are Einstein's coefficients, characteristic of the atom. Hence, we can equate the right-hand side of these equations as shown here. At thermal equilibrium, the Einstein's coefficients B12 and B21 are equal, so we can eliminate these from this statement. Therefore, we need N2 to be greater than N1 for lasing to occur. The term given for this case is called population inversion. By then looking at Boltzmann's statistics for a two energy level system, it is not possible to achieve population inversion, even by dramatically increasing the temperature. The nature of the exponential term means that the ratio of N2 will not be greater than N1. Therefore, in order to achieve lasing, it is necessary to have a system where there are two or more energy levels. Here is a diagram showing a three energy level system required to achieve population inversion for lasing. Electrons are pumped through various methods to an excited state where they undergo a rapid non-radiative transition, relaxing into the metastable state. They accumulate in this long-lived state, creating population inversion between this state and the lower energy level E1. Electrons in the metastable state await an incoming photon to stimulate the transition between this state and E1. This results in an identical photon being emitted. Therefore, the output of the this stimulated emission process is the initial photon and the photon by stimulation. Although the population of the number of atoms at E2 is larger than at E1 due to population inversion, there is still a significant number of atoms at E1 reducing the amplification gain of the system. This leads us to a 4 energy level system. With a 4 energy level system, the population inversion is between levels E3 and E2. This system has a fast non radiative transition between E2 and the lower energy level E1 that allows the population at E2 to be depleted rapidly. Therefore, N3 has become significantly larger than N2, increasing the amplification gain. This creates a population inversion requiring minimal energy from the pumping process making this more efficient than the three energy level system. To summarize, for lasing we need stimulated emission to occur. For this to happen we need population inversion. This is not possible for a two energy level system, leading us to look at a three energy level system. We then found that this is inefficient due to a high N1 value that lowers the amplification. We then found that the most efficient system for lasing requires four energy levels due to the value of N2 to being depleted through a fast transition to N1, thus creating a larger ratio of N3 to N2 for amplification.